My brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, I uh, meant to say also that uh, today we especially should keep in mind our brothers and sisters in Texas who are suffering the consequences of hur Hurricane Harvey, that they have uh, the company of God during these challenging days and our prayers to assist them in whatever they need. Today, as I also said before, in this Mass, we are honored to welcome our men and women who work in, the, in law enforcement and uh, the fire department personnel. Uh, let us all pray for these men and women who serve and protect us. We want to pray for them today and for their families. And my dear brothers and sisters in law enforcement and fire department, I also want to express my gratitude along with my prayers for you. What you do is essential to our democracy and to the health of our communities and neighborhoods. You serve our communities at great, great sacrifice and personal risk every day. We all know that in your daily work, you face many challenges. We know you have great responsibilities to defend justice and the common good, to seek the truth and protect peace. So, on behalf of all the people that you serve, especially the poor and vulnerable, let me say thank you for all and everything you do every day to keep our communities safe and strong. So turning to the uh, readings that we just heard, in our gospel today, we come to, in a sense, to a point of no return for the disciples. As we know from uh, hearing the uh, gospels, the, the gospel every day in the last few weeks, Jesus has been traveling all around with his disciples. He has been teaching the crowds and healing and working miracles. And today, what we hear is that Jesus wants to know what they think about him. It is interesting that uh, first he asked them, he asked the apostles, what the people in the crowds have been saying. And so they tell him. People think that he is Elijah or one of the other prophets who has returned. Or they think that maybe he's St. John the Baptist who has come back to the, from the dead. So then Jesus asks, asks them, but who do you say that I am? Now, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the most important question. It is the only question, really, that matters. And he's asking that same question to each one of us personally today, once again. At the crowds in the time of Jesus, many of our friends and neighbors today will agree that Jesus was an import, import, important historical figure. They will say that he was a great prophet, a moral teacher who had great wisdom. Those things are true. And for us, we are Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. He is more than that. Because the encounter with Jesus must be a personal encounter for each one of us, for every person. At some level, it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about Jesus. What matters for us were, as I said and we know, uh, followers of Jesus Christ, what matters 
is if we believe personally that he is the Christ, the Son of God, perfect God and perfect man. And that question is asked to each one of us personally again today. Who do you say that I am? Jesus is asking us. And no one else can answer that question for you and for me. Of course, as we hear, St. Peter had the right answer. He says to Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So this is the answer. He is the Christ. He is the Savior of every man and woman. He is the answer to every question. He is the desire of every heart. And my brothers and sisters, if we know Jesus, we know everything. We know who we are, where are we going, why we are here. This is the whole purpose of our lives to find Jesus, to know him, and to love him, and to serve him, and to try to imitate him, and help others to discover, through our way of life, that he's really God. And he's asking us to share with the people around us his love for every one of us, the love of God for humanity. But then, because St. Peter recognized him, he got the, good, the right answer. Um, he got an A plus on his answer. Uh, Jesus made him the rock. He built his church upon St. Peter's witness of faith. So as we know, in this gospel, we have the beginning of the church. In a sense, St. Peter is appointed the first pope, the head of Christ's church on earth. And what is amazing also, and I think we should reflect on this too, is that Jesus gives Peter the keys that the prophet Isaiah foretold in the first reading that we just heard. The prophet says, I will place, coming obviously on his uh, uh, revelation from God. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he, op when he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. And Jesus gives him, gives St. Peter, the same authority. And by extension, his authority of service is handed to the bishops and the priests. So, under the Pope's authority, the Church has the power, through her sacraments, to sanctify people and set people free, to forgive our sins and to make us holy. Amazing. We hear those beautiful words that Jesus spoke to Peter. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. These are some of the greatest words in the gospel. Because by these words, we are set free from our weakness, from our sins. These are amazing words of freedom. Jesus sets us free to live for him, to love our neighbor, and to build God's kingdom on earth. So it's, it's taking away from us those negative things that can be in our personalities, in our way of doing things, and allowing us to go out and dedicate ourselves to serve our brothers and sisters, to create the common good, to love each other, to love our brothers and sisters, to uh, uh, go over the differences that sometimes we can have in our society and to bring that love and unity that comes from God. So, Jesus is, is challenging us today. He's challenging us to make a decision about him, 
to make a decision to take him for the path of our lives. Jesus is calling us, as he called those first disciples, to follow him, to be with him, to serve him. And again, to show people who he is through our daily life. This week then, in our work, in our homes, let us try to follow Jesus more closely. Let us ask for that grace to have more faith, to trust in the Holy Spirit to guide us. Especially when we see the challenges that we have in our society these days, let us especially trust in God. For men, Jesus says in the gospel, it's impossible. For God, everything is possible. So let us pray. And let us ask for that grace to really be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And with St. Peter to say, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us pray, especially as I said before, for our uh, men and women in public uh, and, and working uh, in, the, in the public, for the public safety of our country and our society. May God bless your families for their sacrifices, for their devotion to our community and to the people. And may God keep all of you safe from all harm and help you all to always act with justice and compassion. And may our Blessed Mother Mary help us today to renew our faith in Jesus Christ and our faith and love for his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.